Hey guys, it's Yogi here, and welcome to the channel for what is episode 17 of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Just before we get into the video that's going to give you all the juicy details in order to improve your lap times around this track, I just wanted to say, if you're new to the channel and enjoying this in-depth track guide series, then please consider subscribing to the channel, it will be very much appreciated, and if you want to follow me on other social media pages, my links are down in the description below. So for episode 17 we are going to be looking at Donington Park in the UK, the first of the British GT circuits. The circuit's length is 2.5 miles which equates to 4.02 kilometres, has 12 corners, requires a medium to high downforce with medium suspension setup and then your key overtaking areas and possibilities for making those passes are going to be in turn 1, turn 4, turn 7, 8, turn 9, turn 11 and turn 12. As usual, we'll begin by taking a look at the pit entry, and it can be found on the left-hand side just after the final corner. Before you get to the dotted white line that is at the beginning of the pit entry slip road, you'll need to start braking in order to get the car slowed down before the pit speed limiter line, which is placed right at the beginning of the barrier that separates the pit lane from the main track. The point at which you can disengage the pit speed limiter is right at the end of the pit lane just before the barrier ends where the grass starts there on the left hand side and you can also reference the traffic lights that are there up on the fence on the right hand side. When you exit out of the pit lane along the pit exit slip road you'll be merging right into the braking zone and the entry to turn one so do keep an eye out for faster cars approaching in your mirrors coming up behind you when coming out of the pit lane. So moving on to the actual circuit, we'll begin with the braking zone for turn one. The braking zone, you actually want to utilize the pit exit slip road. So move across over there, keeping two wheels within the white lines, braking just as the green painted tarmac ends. And you're gonna shift all the way down into second gear, turning into hook up an apex on the inside curb, roughly about here. The apex is reasonably late in the corner, so you wanna create a nice smooth flowing line for it. And you can use that inside serrated curb in both both the dry and also the wet conditions. When it comes to the exit, you've got a single width serrated curb here with a little bit of green painted tarmac just beyond it. Beyond that is the grass and then the gravel trap, so obviously you don't want to be going over onto that, otherwise you'll hurt your momentum coming off the corner. Use this curb on the exit in the dry conditions, however, as this is a key traction zone, you'll be wanting to avoid it in the wet. Turn 2 is a tiny little right-handed kink we don't really need to worry about, but turn 3 is a little bit more substantial. In the dry conditions, this should be completely flat out, you should be able to run the curb here on the inside, no issue. However, in the wet conditions, you want to take caution with this curb, and you'll probably also actually need to lift off before turning in in order to make the apex and staying on the track when coming out through the corner. Coming off the exit of turn 3, we pretty much immediately come into the braking zone for turn 4, and we want to be positioning our car as far left as we possibly can. For our braking point, we can reference the board with a single slash through it on the right hand side of the circuit there. We're going to brake in a straight line pointing towards the outside and then turn the car in, aiming to hook up the apex in turn 4 on this curb here. As there is green painted tarmac on the inside of the curb, you can take a fair amount of it. You can knock those two bollards that are there on the inside over without damaging your car, no issue. And you can use this curb in both the dry and also the wet conditions. Coming out through the exit, we again have a single serrated curb with some green painted tarmac beyond that. Use that green painted tarmac to your advantage in the dry conditions. Providing you keep two wheels either on or within the white lines, you should be fine and not infringe any track limits. And then when it comes to the wet conditions, you can run this exit curb, however, do take caution with it. Turn 5 is another little left-handed kink that we shouldn't need to worry about, just run the inside curb, take it completely flat out in both the dry and wet conditions, but again turn 6 is a little bit more crucial. Hook up the inside curb around about here, you can use this in the dry conditions, probably stay off the curb in the wet conditions, as this is going to be crucial for setting yourself up ready for the right-hander of turn 7. Immediately after the curb of turn 6, we're into the braking zone for turn 7. We're going to use the end of the curbing as our reference point to start braking, and we want to have the car as far left as we possibly can which is why it's crucial to run the curb in that corner in the dry conditions we're going to turn the car in and we're going to aim to hook up a late apex here in turn seven second gear just take a nice sweeping line through the corner and focus on the exit you can run this inside curb pretty much no problem in both the dry and wet conditions 
When it comes to the exit, we once again have a single whip serrated curb with some green painted tarmac beyond it. This green painted tarmac is a little bit wider than the previous two corners, so you make sure to use that in the dry conditions. Obviously, in the wet conditions, coming off this second gear corner, traction is going to be a little bit more crucial, so you probably want to avoid it, especially as you can see, there's a little bit of adverse camber there, and the curb just kind of drops away from the circuit. We then start to come up the hill and into the blind approach of turn 8. References for the braking point here are a little bit more sparse, so I tend to judge it by braking about 20 odd meters after the single dash brake board that's there on the right hand side of the track. Once we've done our braking, we're going to turn the car in and aim to clip as much of the apex curb as we possibly can here on the inside. It should be in second gear, it's a single serrated curb with green painted time out beyond it, so make sure to use all of it. Again, you can knock the two pillars that are there in the inside without damaging the car. And as you come through the corner, you want to be aiming to hang towards the middle of the circuit. Don't run out wide too early. The corner goes on for quite a bit and if you do find yourself running out too wide too early, you'll get yourself in trouble running into the grass and gravel. On the actual exit, there is a serrated curb once you get to the straight. There's no green painted tarmac beyond it, it's just grass and gravel, so don't run out too wide here. Use this in the dry conditions, however, avoid it in the wet. Next up is the braking zone for turns 9 and 10, the left right chicane here in this layout of Donington, where our braking point is going to be roughly between the two boards that are there placed on the right hand side of the track. It's a downhill braking zone, so make sure you get as much of your braking as you possibly can before floating the car in. The first apex, you should be trying to take as much of the curbing as you possibly can without hitting the tyre stack on the inside of the corner. If you clip that, you are likely to do damage to your car, however, you can hit those two plastic bollards. Coming out through the second part, through the right-hander, again, you want to be taking as much of the curbing as you possibly can. However, there is a long sausage curb that is here on the inside, or a sleeping policeman, and this can make for a pretty bumpy run through the corner. So some cars will allow you to take a little bit more of the inside there. Some cars, you may have to try and avoid it in order to keep the car planted and accelerating out through the exit. Off on the exit, there is a serrated curb on the left-hand side of the track. There is no painted tarmac beyond it, just grass and gravel so avoid dipping your wheels onto that. In the dry conditions you should be able to run this curb pretty much no issue and then in the wet conditions you will want to be avoiding it to avoid any traction loss. After a short straight, we then come into the braking zone for the penultimate turn. Our braking reference marker is going to be the board on the left hand side with the single slash for it. It's a downhill braking zone, so if you blow your braking point, you're going to run pretty deep into the corner. Coming into the apex, we should be in first gear. It isn't crucial to run the inside curb. You want to be clipping an apex pretty late in the corner and focusing on the exit. The main thing is to maintain a bit of speed coming through this turn, obviously without running wide. If you do find yourself hugging the curb or running it, you'll be fine to do that in both the dry and wet conditions. When you come out to the exit, you want to get a good drive coming off of here. So again, it is crucial that you avoid this exit curb in the wet conditions. You'll be fine to run it in the dry conditions. Single serrated curb, grass on the outside, no painted tarmac. We're then into the final corner on the circuit, a left-handed hairpin, and again, it's a little bit of a downhill braking zone. Judging your braking point here is a little bit difficult. It's about 10, 15, maybe 20 meters after the single slashed board on the left-hand side of the circuit. Again, let the car roll through the entry and try to focus on hooking up a late apex and focus on getting a good drive off the corner. Clip the curb on the inside. You can do this in both the dry and wet conditions, no problem. And then when it comes to the exit. Try and get the car as straight as possible to translate that power coming off the corner. You've got a single serrated curb on the outside here with just grass beyond it, no painted tarmac. You can use this outside curb in the dry conditions, however in the wet you'll be wanting to avoid it as this is going to be a key traction zone for the run to the line to complete your lap. So now that we've completed a breakdown of the lap, let's jump on board and piece it all together at racing speed.
So now that we set a pretty good demonstration lap around Donington, I just want to finish off the episode by saying please be mindful of what your car and car setup is capable of. Some cars will be able to brake a little bit later than others. Some cars will be able to take curves better than others. It's obviously going to be dependent on your car setup. It may have a slight factor as well. And then obviously the weather conditions are going to play a factor too. Obviously I've tried to highlight these things where possible but please do take note and obviously apply accordingly to the session, race or conditions that you're driving in. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification, you'll be notified each time a video goes live and you won't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you back for the next one. Until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.